The moment you've all been waiting for, Unify Protect 5.0 is now out, and we're gonna take a bit of a deep dive into this video. So we can see right next to me, right here, we have all the settings that are gonna be updated within Unify Protect. So let's quickly run through some of them. Now, the biggest one that has been out there for a little while is the ONVIF support, and we're gonna try and set up a couple of cameras and see how well that works. We also now have the ability to archive to Dropbox, we now also have device tag support, which allows you to group cameras, which is easier to view certain areas if that's what you have within a group. We have storage manager options, which now allows you to expand your storage. So we have two sections where we have the high quality recording and then a lower quality recording for a little bit later down the line. But we'll take a look at that also as well. We have support for pairing chimes to multiple doorbells. So no longer is it one chime to one doorbell. You can now pair multiple. You can now restore your stacked backup onto a non-stacked console. So that's one feature that's probably there. I don't have a stacked setup, so it's not been an issue for me before, but that's something you can now do as well, as well as a more efficient recording engine. There's a couple of bug fixes in here. So there's an issue where losing AI event settings after restoring backups, some issues with some custom permissions and a few other ones there if you wanna go ahead and read them. So. Without a doubt, let's jump straight in. Let's look at some of the other ones and then we're going to cover ONVIF towards the end. So let's start with the archiving. You can see this little button here that we've had before. You can now choose a section. And then if we go ahead and scroll down, you can see down here, you can archive to a NAS drive that I've already got set up. You can download it to this device or you can add more options. So this is where you now see Dropbox as that wasn't there previously. Next, let's move on to device tags. And that's where we have this little button in the top just here where you can create tags. I'm gonna call this outdoor cameras and I want the G4 doorbell pro. And if you have multiple, which I will towards the end of this video where I add in my third party cameras to this, we can go ahead and add them within here. So we click apply and you can go ahead and create multiple. So if I type in bedrooms, for example, and then I can go ahead and tick them and click save. And then I can organize them between two. So if I want to go ahead and just see the outdoor cameras, it shows me what's there. And then with the bedrooms also as well, I can tick that and it will only show me them. You can go ahead and tick multiple as well. And then when you're selected with one, if you want to go ahead and clear it, you just go ahead and press the X and then you're back to your original settings. Next, we're going to want to go to storage manager and we go to the settings click on storage manager and you can see at the moment with my eight terabyte drive, I can get about 140 days worth of recording. And the earliest recording was about five months ago. So to change that setting right there, you go to enhanced retention. You can then choose how long you want the recording for. So if you only need high quality recording, say for example, for seven days, this then moves and gives me 1133 days worth of recording. Or let's say you needed three weeks, for example, then that gives me 1015 days worth of recording there. And if you really needed something like 60 days, for example, you can see you can choose this and tailor this to however you need it to be done. It would be good in some instances where we could change the retention depending on the type of camera, but maybe that might be something that's coming later on down the line. So just going back to this, unfortunately, I don't have the chimes to be able to show you this and neither do I have a stacked system to show you that part as well, but just know that they are part of the latest version. So let's move on to ONVIF. Now you can see at this point, I have no cameras in here connected at all. I do have two connected to my network, which I will show you. So if I type in Hikvision, you can see I have two cameras connected. I have one right here, which is connected with me. So we can test this one and I have one set up outside already. So one thing to keep in mind is you are gonna have to log into the camera first to make sure all the settings are correct. So with the Hikvision one, I can quickly show you, you need to go to networking and then advanced and then the integration protocol. And you can see there's a tick box there that says ONVIF. Keep in mind the username and password you probably log into the camera is completely different to the ONVIF camera. This is for Hikvision. For other manufacturers, it might be slightly different, but keep in mind that they might not be the same credentials. So be sure to log in and have a look at what you've got set up. So we have two cameras. I have one on my network and I have one on a separate CCTV VLAN. And I'm gonna show you how to set them both up because there's a slight difference between the two at this point. Uh, maybe something Unify are gonna adjust later on down the line. So if we go to devices right here, so the first thing then you want to do is go to settings, go down to system, and then you want to tick third part, discover third party cameras, and then you click apply. 
we go back to our devices and straight away you can see it's picked up one of the Hikvision cameras. And that is the one that is on the same network. So we can go ahead and adopt that. And this is where we type in the username and password for the ONVIF. Just like that, you can see the third party camera is added. You can see the picture pops up straight away. Now for the camera that's on, the v on another VLAN, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be picking it up at this point. But if you can't find your device, you can try the advanced adoption. And I'll show you that again. You click on the question mark in the top right hand corner and try the advanced adoption. You can type in the IP address, type in again, the username and password for those credentials. And then it says third party camera adopted. We refresh the page and then you'll see that camera appear just here. So we have two cameras now. So we have the outdoor one on our main VLAN and then we have one on another VLAN. So we have two that are set up. Now I am gonna do more of an in-depth tutorial about how you get this set up with another VLAN, your firewall ports, et cetera, et cetera. So if you wanna see something specific in that video, drop me a comment down below and I'll see if I can put something together on that. Now going back to the cameras, we can go ahead and look at this one. So let me just move myself out of the way and you can then see the camera underneath. So we've got an IP address, we know the frame rate it's running at, we know the bit rate it's running at. Now keep in mind, all these settings are being pulled from the camera itself. So if there is something at this point that you want to adjust, you need to adjust it within the camera. We have the recording mode, so we have always or custom schedule or never and the recording retention as well. And these are some of the other settings as well. So now if I want to select a tag for this camera, I know this is an outdoor camera, I can go ahead and select that one and it's now going to be part of those tags. We now have the manage functionality. You do also have notification settings in here, but keep in mind at this point in time with version five of Unify Protect, it is only record only. So the notification settings don't work at this point, but maybe something Ubiquiti will be bringing something in the future. The last one is the share live stream. So we can click the link and go and open this in a new window. And if I open this in a private browsing window, you can see that works also as well. So you can share this link with someone. So that functionality of it does work. Two more things I wanna cover. And the first one is the recording. So this actually seems really weird at the moment because I can see myself while I'm recording. Um, but the camera capacity, so I currently have a UDM SE. And if you keep in mind that the 4K cameras that I have are gonna fill this up quite quickly. And if we have a look at the support that I have left, I can only add four more 4K cameras in, but I actually have more that I need to add. So there might be a chance that you might need to downgrade the quality of the camera, or in my case, I will most likely be upgrading my console. So that's a video that's coming in the future. So do stick around and subscribe if you wanna know more about that and how that works. The other thing I'm gonna show you is the playback functionality. So just like any other camera that you have within Unify Protect, you can scroll through, you can have a look, and you can see the live video if you wish to do so. You have the quality of the recording, and just like all the other cameras, you can go ahead and download it to a NAS, or download the footage locally, or even archive it to Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive. There is another functionality within the cameras as well, and that is adding shortcuts. So this came in the last Unify Protect update, uh, you can go to edit shortcuts and you can see I've already added one here and you can go ahead and use the door on there. So for example, you can see this right here. It's currently offline as it's not plugged in, but you can go ahead and use the unlock feature if you're using a third party camera. At this point, it's not perfect, but it was never gonna be perfect in version one. This is a huge step bringing in third party cameras into the ecosystem. And there is from multiple sources saying that there is more to come. So hopefully we're gonna see more addition of the alarms and other functionalities that we might want to see. If there is a functionality that's missing that you wanna see, let me know down in the comments below and see if there are people asking for the same thing or if there are any different ideas. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.